Glad we got to talk a little bit about something lighter there, because uh, now we're going to talk about something much more uh, serious and uh, depressing, frankly. Uh, and that's the recent mass shootings in California. We had uh, two in quick succession there. And um, uh, what we're going to actually focus on is a recent report from the Secret Service that you wrote about, which details uh, some of some of these incidents. And try, it looks at a bunch of incidents over a four-year period and tries to find some connections or some takeaways that that society, you know, we can look at uh, and try to perhaps prevent future attacks like this. So can you just give us a little bit of detail on exactly what they found? Sure. Yeah. So as you said, the Secret Service released this report. Uh, they have a, a subdivision in the agency called the National Threat Assessment Center. And they basically analyzed a series of what they call mass attacks, which they define as an, uh, an incident in a public or semi-public place where three or more people are harmed, not including the attacker. So this is not specifically just an active shooter incident or something that you might see in, in other contexts. It includes things like, you know, someone taking a car and, and, and attacking or a mass stabbing spree, for example. So it's all of these mass attack incidents that they examined. And what they found was that well, they, they they studied 173, I guess, fell under this criteria that they used. But they found that in more than three quarters of those cases, the individual or individuals who went on to commit these attacks exhibited concerning behavior that was picked up on by their peers, their family, or law enforcement prior to their attack. Right. Um, so that tells us that there's clearly pre-attack indicators in the vast majority of these incidents. Yeah, and I think that's what a lot of people have noticed over the years, right? The reporting right. on the, each one of these incidents. There always seems to be something that was a red flag or a warning sign. You know, that's why red flag laws have become a relatively popular solution for this. Uh, you know, certainly not a perfect one for a number of reasons that you know we've talked about previously on the show. But uh, you know, there's there's criticism, and they also aren't they don't work perfectly to prevent these incidents. But but regardless, uh, you know, that's something that people I think have noticed certainly from watching these unfold is that there are usually some sort of uh, warning sign or usually some sort of incident that happened previously where uh, if something had been done, it could have prevented this person from at the very least being able to legally purchase guns because uh, wasn't that another finding of this report that most of these guns, most, most of the incidents that involved guns, the guns were legally purchased, right? Yeah. So, uh, a little less than three quarters of these mass attack incidents were committed with firearms. And of those attacks that were committed with firearms, I believe about a quarter involved illegally obtained guns. Mm -hmm. And about one third of those attackers were prohibited in some way from owning a gun. Either they were a felon yeah. or they were adjudicated mentally deficient by a court. Um, so in a lot of these cases, there, there were already things that should indicate that they couldn't obtain a gun to commit this attack in the first place. Which does... Uh also show you that even if you do follow through sometimes and the person is prohibited, they can still carry something like this out, um, even by obtaining a gun somehow. I mean, sometimes it's uh, systemic problems like in Southern Springs, where the shooter was prohibited from his uh, criminal record in the military, but those records were never shared with the FBI's background check system. So he was able to buy a gun from a dealer without being denied on the background check. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, still, I think that that leaves a lot of, you know, it's what's two thirds of the attackers who used a gun weren't prohibited, even though they probably, they may have had incidents in the past, in their past, which would have made them prohibited if someone had followed through on them. Um, you know, that, that sort of, uh, reminds me of, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of people, unfortunately, that, that reminds me of the Parkland shooter, uh, and some of his domestic violence incidents, um, the, uh, obviously the most recent shooter in Colorado at the nightclub, uh, where he had previously called in a bomb threat and threatened to kill both his family members, his mother and his grandparents and police officers, but was still not, um, the, the, he was charged, but the case didn't proceed because the family members dropped out. Um, and then nobody, nothing was done about the threats towards police. So, uh, you know, th there's a lot of those sorts of things, it seems like, uh, from this report in a lot of these attackers' histories. 
That's right. Yeah. I think they found that something like two thirds. So of that three quarters that they identified that exhibited concerning behavior, about two thirds mm -hmm. of those had made serious violent threats that were picked up upon either by, you know, employers or family members or even law enforcement in this case. I think 64 percent had criminal arrests or at least charges filed against them in their past. Mm. So clearly, once again, documented at least risks, documented severe risks that weren't, I guess, not enough was done to intervene to prevent them from later going on to commit more heinous acts. Yeah. Uh, and you saw this in, in the Monterey shooting with that attacker. He had had, uh, at the very least, a previous criminal uh, incident with illegal possession of a firearm in the 90s. Um, and so it's not clear why that didn't make him prohibited, why he was able to purchase guns or, or have the guns that he used. Um, but yeah, so this carries through even to these most recent shootings. Uh, and, and I think it's, it's important to understand that because, uh, as I think this port report gets into it means that things can be done, um, right. that, that the, these are preventable, many of these incidents. Um, so can you talk a little bit about, about that section? Like, so they're saying, all right, there's these red flags that occur. There's some common ones among these attackers that we examined, uh, what do they say about what could be done? Yeah, so I guess they have a, a system, behavioral threat assessment is the Secret Service's term for their system for trying to identify these patterns of behavior and then work with either local law enforcement partners to sort of implement plans at the department level. But it also recommends stuff like workplaces creating um, ide threat identification programs for or, or other cases um, sort of like intermediary getting between workplace grievances and, and identifying workplace grievances before they fester and become violent because the vast majority of these attacks they were saying could be identified to a, grie a personal grievance of some sort, either perceived or a real slight that was done to one of these attackers. And so being better about at the community level, at the workplace level, at the school level, um, creating these systems to intervene before things fester and, and become violent when they don't need to be is, is what they're really recommending. Yeah, and I think that goes along with uh, something that Professor James Allen Fox from, from Northeastern, um, who helps run the Associated Press's uh, mass shooting database, uh, what he was telling me back when we had him on the podcast uh, a while ago, I think it was, uh, you know, over a year ago now, but a lot of these basic lessons remain the same, unfortunately, um, uh, each time, which, you know, is that these are preventable. These are people who generally feel some sort of uh, grievance that they've been, you know, wronged in some way and that they don't see um, that th they see this as a outlet for that um, and that there can be ways to intervene ahead of time if you recognize the warning signs and take action. Now, at the same time, this report also makes clear that there isn't necessarily a mass shooter profile. It's not like you can just check off uh, that he's got these three uh, characteristics. So this person is definitely going to be a mass shooter. Uh, they do note, I think repeatedly in there, that while these warning signs can indicate that someone is you know, prone to commit uh, a mass attack like this, doesn't mean that they will. And in fact, the vast majority of people who exhibit one of these warning signs it will not become violent, right? Yeah, they, they especially made this clear when it comes to mental health symptoms, because I believe they identified something like 60 plus percent of these mass attackers exhibited one or more mental health symptoms leading up to their attacks or during their attacks. Um, but of course, we know that people all over the place struggle with mental health Mm -hmm. um, illnesses up to one extent or another, but then don't go on to commit attacks, right? Of course not. So th you have to be careful with how you apply these these perceived uh, criteria, because um, like you said, not everyone that meets some of these criteria is going to go on to then become an attacker. Right. It's just like not everyone who has a grievance at work or feels bullied or uh, is, is upset about th their divorce or something along those lines is going to go out and kill somebody. That's obviously, obviously not the case. I think the that and that is something that makes it more difficult, right, to combat these things. Because you can't know ahead of time which person who exhibits one of these warning signs that they describe in this report is going to end up being somebody who uh, is capable of 
committing this kind of mass violence um, because the vast majority of people are not somebody like that. Or uh, even if they are, even if there were, you could prove somebody was predisposed, it doesn't mean that they would do it. Right. Um, you know, that, that's, that's the issue that you're dealing with. And so I think there, <clears throat> but still, it doesn't mean nothing can be done again. Right. It's still there. They have these solutions that they've laid out of basically tr making sure that you're intervening when you see one of these warning signs, when, whether it's a school official, a work, uh, uh, you know, uh, somebody who works with someone else who's exhibiting you know, this kind of stressor um, or a family member, like you have to realize that the, first of all, people who carry out mass shootings don't always, there's no profile for someone like that. It's, you know, there's a stereotype out there about it and, <clears throat> ah, excuse me, but that can lead to people assuming that, well, you know, this person might be struggling with something, but they're, they're not, you know, the stereotype of a, of a, of a killer. And so I'm, I'm gonna, you know, not do as much as maybe I should. I'm not going to be the person who speaks up or intervenes to get this person help or to, uh, you know, make sure that they're, uh, held accountable for their actions or something like that. You know, when they, they when they commit a smaller level crime. And, um, and I think that is ultimately one of the, the big problems that they're talking about in this report is there's people recognize these warning signs, but they often don't associate them with the potential risk of, uh, you know, them leading to a mass attack. Right. Yeah, no, I think that's, <clears throat> I think that's exactly right. It's, it's a matter of identifying these these patterns of behaviors that have been pre-attack indicators in the past, especially if they occur, multi multiples of them occur for, for a single person. And then basically a, a communal based, see something, say something type response where, yeah. you know, get involved, be, don't be afraid to intervene um, because it just might, it just might prevent something like this from happening in the future.